Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today uh, we're in Staten Island and I actually had a YouTube fan contact me and schedule an appointment in the morning. So uh, we have a 2006 Toyota Camry here and I'm going to ask the owner what the symptoms are and we'll just do the diagnosis and hopefully find out what this problem is. Uh, so what, what's the issue with the car, Kyung? Issue is uh, ABS activation at okay. low speeds. Uh -huh. um, it started in January or so. It happened uh -huh. once, and then, then over time now it's pretty much worse, every time. Worse and worse. Time, yeah, every time I break. Uh -huh. um, no other symptoms with the car. Okay. Uh, just, I mean, no vibrations, nothing. It's uh -huh. just kind of just happened. Uh, that one time and it just got worse and then with the check engine light and the check on. engine light that is on yeah, yeah interesting okay huh so typically when i think of abs activation at low speed i would say uh, on toyotas i've seen like a tone ring problem where you know cracks and then the sensor doesn't pick up the right signal and it thinks the wheel's slipping a little bit but i've never seen a check engine light come on with this problem so I guess we'll get the scanner out and start from scratch and see what we have. All right, let's see, 63,000 miles. Let's uh, just scan for codes. Get the Varus uh, booted up here. So let's start with a complete code scan to see what's stored in the uh, engine computer and if there's anything stored in the ABS. So this will take a minute. Alright, so here's all the systems detected. In the engine we have P0500 and current and history, that's the only code there, vehicle speed sensor A fault. Transmission, same two codes, and cruise control, same two codes. Okay, so there's just one code in here, it's just listed several times. Interesting, so let's go to engine, automatic transmission, and just quickly see what this troubleshooter says, or at least get kind of an idea of how the system works. P0500. So it's interesting that a vehicle speed sensor malfunction would cause ABS activation. That's that's weird. I mean, the systems are definitely tied together, but you would think that the speed sensors would be separate. Let's see. So, description. Speed sensor detects the wheel speed and sends the appropriate signals to the skid control ECU. Interesting. That's the ABS unit. Then the skid control ECU converts these wheel speeds uh, to a different signal and sends it to the computer and the uh, instrument cluster. Okay. ECM determines the vehicle speed based on frequency of these pulse signals. Interesting. So this code is set when the vehicle is being driven and no vehicle speed sensor is transmitted to the ECM. Hmm. And you got possible causes. Open or shortened speed signal circuit. Speedometer circuit combination meter or the computer itself. <laughs> it gives you the option to clear the codes. So we can either monitor the speed here or let's just get out of the troubleshooter and just look at live data. should be under generic engine or overall data vehicle speed is you know critical input to transmission shifting to uh, to everything actually so uh, there it is there's vehicle speed let's customize this for a faster data update deselect just vehicle speed and just view that parameter okay we'll graph it go for a little test drive All right, so 
I'll just slowly accelerate here. So we're moving. And the vehicle speed's still zero. We're moving a little faster. This is, uh, let's say, three miles an hour, four miles an hour. Still at zero. We're creeping. See, it jumped up to three, four. I can feel the uh, traction control system kicking in. Nope, there goes the ABS. Seven, six, ABS activation, four, two, one. Try accelerating slowly again. Hmm. So we verified the customer complaint for sure. Um, we had no codes in the EBS module. However, since on the system, I'm still not sure if we have a separate vehicle speed sensor meaning on the transmission like on the output gear or if it's coming straight from the ABS unit like the troubleshooter said so is it just using the ABS sensors to calculate the vehicle speed so I think we should go to the ABS menu and look at each uh, wheel speed sensor so there's that data you know from our engine computer now let's Go back to uh, back out of here. ABS. And if you don't know which one this is, the handy tip is it doesn't have traction control. Go right there. Four USA Bosch. Yeah, it's a VIN four. So we have the USA Bosch system. Looks like. Uh, let's display some data. We'll customize that guy. You select all. And we just want vehicle speed or wheel speed and vehicle speed. Okay, let's graph that. Wait, did I not select vehicle speed? Okay. One, two, three. Four. We need another straight line here. There's the ABS activation again. Okay, so what do we see? We have to accelerate. Just let it creep. So the rear speeds are registering. 3.1, 2.3. The fronts are stuck at zero until we get to about three miles per hour, it looks like. There you go. The front left is turning on. The front right is still stuck at zero until we get to Well, I see 4.7. So is this a classic, you know, rust build up under the sensor? Could be. Oh, there's ABS. That drops out right to zero. Then that one drops out. And then the rears come down evenly. So I don't like both front sensors, especially the front right. That's, that's the really bad one. See how sharp the transitions are? It's not registering anything below four miles an hour. This one's not registering anything below three miles an hour. Okay, and I'm wondering what our vehicle speed was. So, you know, the rear, we don't really care about. Oh, let's see, left rear, we don't care about. Let's look, just look at vehicle speed right there. So where's that graph coming from? 
it sure looks similar to the front right. Definitely not the rear right. So I'm assuming this guy is more focused on the front sensors. Front left, front right. Maybe it uses an average of the two fronts. Okay, 2.3, 3.9. zero even though we're still moving so it's it looks like it's using the front left more so than He's dropping out, dropping out. So it's definitely biased on the front sensors, which we see both of them are acting up, especially the front right. So at this point, we'll jack the car up and take the wheel off, maybe do a visual inspection, and test the signal as we're spinning the wheel by hand with a scope just to see the amplitude. And on scan data, I'm assuming these are just VRS type sensors. We'll see the, uh, you know, what the amplitude of the signal is. If it's too low, the computer won't even recognize it. So that is very interesting scan data. And we see that the vehicle speed is picked up from these ABS sensors. It's not from the uh, transmission output shaft. Uh, so let's get out of here. We can go to our component tests and just see uh, what this ABS system. Let's see Bosch with EBD. Yeah, okay. Wheel speed sensors. Our system description. First, read that. Okay, that's just definitions. Vehicle speed sensors, front, rear, component information. Yep, AC voltage signal. Yep, just pick up coil tooth rotor. Back probe two wire wheel speed sensor at the terminals. <clears throat> okay, so I think right now it's time for a visual inspection and get the scope out. And just make sure that, you know, compare maybe right to left, see if the amplitude's different, see if there's a lot of rust buildup. So we'll go from there. So one other variable that the customer just made me aware of is there was some wiring damage under the hood. He said some rodent chewed on this harness here. Uh, now this was, I guess, a few years ago. And then... He had a code for the right front ABS sensor. They replaced the sensor, that didn't help. Then they found the wiring damage, repaired the wires, and he said he was good for about a year or so. Yeah. Right? About a year. And then this problem started happening, right? So, I mean, if the repair was good for a year, well, hopefully he did a good job with the wiring repair. But we'll find out. So we're going to jack the car up, take the, you know, one wheel off at a time, and just spin it and see what our uh, signals are. Alright, so I just want to get the raw signal for an ABS sensor. We have the wheel lifted up off the ground. It's a two-wire sensor. I have it unplugged, and we're just back probing both wires, you know, on the sensor side. Let's go to our scope real quick. and just see what the signal looks like. Lap scope for channel. I'll hook this guy up.
channel that's good. Let's see if we get anything. side and compare. I'm not seeing anything. We're spinning the wheel. I'm not seeing anything on the scope. Now we can, I mean nothing. We can check our scope. Verify that we're actually recording. Come here to the battery. Put one lead on there. You gotta verify your equipment before you use it, right? Yeah, 12 volts. Okay, let's jump over here to this side. Do the same test. So let's spin the right wheel or the left wheel. Uh, okay, so the problem is we're not seeing anything because the signal is so small We have to drop our voltage scale way down it's Instead of so it's a 0 0.1 volts per division Raise this guy up here Now we should be able to see something there we go I'm spinning the wheel kind of fast and it's Oh, 0 0.1 volts peak to peak. You can see our tone ring is fine. However, the amplitude is very, very small. And this is the left wheel, which is supposedly better than the right. So let's stop that, zoom out. You know, there's our Here's our signal. It's, the amplitude is extremely low. We'll save that and we'll compare it to the right. We'll see on this scale what that signal looks like. Alright, so we're on the same scale. We'll let the scope roll. And I'll spin this guy. You can see the amplitude's even lower at the same rotational speed. We're about you know, before we were like 0.2 volts peak to peak, now we're at 0.1 volts peak to peak. That's it's definitely a problem. So I want to take this wheel off and do a visual inspection on the tone ring and the sensor, see what the gap is, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so visual inspection of the sensor itself. That's the problem, rust jacking. Just like on a GM truck that you've seen in my other videos. So this is the one that's been replaced before. And well we have to take it out and see if we can move that shim or get the rust crap from out from under it. That's what's causing our low signal amplitude. Let's take the other wheel off and see what it looks like too. So on this side. We're actually missing the rusty shim, and you can actually see a gap between the, the knuckle here and the sensor, so that's interesting. So I do want to remove sensors on both sides and see if we can clean that surface up, put them in closer, and get that amplitude up at low speeds. All right, well on this side, since the sensor was recently replaced, it came right out, the bolt came out, and. I'm surprised it's not even resisting, you know, fighting me, taking it out. However, you can see how the rust, it's not even a, a shim, it's actually the knuckle. The rust just expanded and lifted that sensor right up off of where it was supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is, we have, you know, a little burr, file. I'm going to plug this hole with a little piece of paper towel and clean this area where the sensor sits. And hopefully they'll bring it in close enough to 
our tone wheel and we'll get a better result, you know, better amplitude of a signal. But first let's knock these chunks of rust off here with a file. Kind of gonna, there we go. Huge. That was like a millimeter of, <laughs> of rust. Here it's not so bad where the screw is, but it is very chunky and nasty here. So, especially right here on the edge. That's why I put the paper towel down so we don't fill the hole with rust particles. I don't know if this will speed up the process at all. I just want to make the surface flat. But I think the, uh, maybe get a little hammer and chisel, clean this guy up. And we should be in good shape. This actually works really well. A little chisel, claw hammer. Go like this and just kind of tap, 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 tap. And we'll get all these rust chunks right off of the surface. You gotta love it. Even though otherwise the car looks in very nice shape. This is a very harsh environment. It gets coated with salt and chemicals in the winter. So finish this up and pop the sensor in, see if it works. Alright, we got the mounting hole all clean and nice. I'm gonna take some of uh, Eric O's favorite fluid film and uh, just spray this guy down liberally and our new sensor should sit in here a lot better let me uh, wipe that off too so like I said I've never seen this particular problem on a Toyota vehicle but it does happen. And I don't see any O-ring on here, so I think it just kinda sits in here and hopefully it's gonna be happy. And then once we bolt this in, bolt that guy in. That's also a problem. The bolt pinch is here, but then the sensor still has some wiggle room. It doesn't quite sit as flush as I would want it to. You know, that's how it should sit. But when you tighten it down, it kind of lifts it up. I wonder if there's a way to improve on that. But, well, yeah. Is it because the surface isn't flat anymore from the excessive rust buildup, or do we have a little more, a little more cleaning to do right in this area? down to the bare metal right between the mounting hole and there's still some junk coming off of there Uh, 
that's the analysis. That is a little better. I wish it was even. But see, the, the rust jacking might have deformed the sensor a little bit too. It kind of bent it on the uh, mounting tab. And I think that's what might have happened. So that's supposed to be completely flat across, but if the rust jacked it here and the bolt was still holding it down, it kind of deforms it a little bit. Now it is a Dunzo sensor, so they did use a quality part. So I'm going to see, see if we can maybe uh, bend this back a little bit or shim this side so it kind of tips it down, but yeah. Well, I found something that seems to work. I put in a little clip and pinched it on the back side of the sensor that way the bolt will actually try to pivot the sensor down and look there's no more gap I think we'll just leave it like this now, I know you guys say you should get a new sensor and spend money but you know what if this lasts as long as a new sensor then I think we'll just leave it like this maybe break it off and just leave that shim in there so we'll do this to the other side as well and this car should be good as new Okay, so that was our signal before, so within these two lines, less than 0.2 volts peak to peak. Let's roll the scope. Oh, wow. That is a, I'm not even turning the wheel that fast. And look at our amplitude. We're already like half a volt peak to peak. I can make it go off, go off the screen now. Huge difference, right? That's a huge, yeah. That's definitely so th this is the proof. The proof is in the pudding, right? <laughs> There we go. Okay, beautiful. I like that. So, before, it was here, after, we're off the screen. You know, like one volt peak to peak at a slower wheel speed. So, this side is fixed. Let's do the other side as well. And clear the codes, take it for a little test drive. Everything should be in good shape. So now we're in the front left side. I love that these sensors come out so nicely. Apparently the, uh, the rust doesn't actually pinch them in the knuckle like on some vehicles. Hum hum GM. And the screw I guess is just in here. Oh, it's spinning with the little dowel pin. That's not a big deal. <clears throat> so at least let's clean this guy off. Get a little file action in here. So this is the original sensor. Toyota did a good design where it's actually tapered right here on the on the mount, so this doesn't get as uh, squeezed in by rust. At least on the front sensors. I don't know about the rears. Those I've had problems with. Okay, so same same concept here. This doesn't look as bad as flaky, but still we'll do the little chisel and hammer cleaning. Yeah, there are some chunks, so it doesn't look that bad until you start picking away at it. So we'll do the same thing, plug it in, see if it makes it better. Alright, this side is all done. I did the same little shim trick. And it is very nicely flush with the knuckle now. Fluid film. Try to prevent this from reoccurring. Put the wheel on, do a spin test. Alright, final shot here. Get the scope going. And spin the wheel. And sure enough, our amplitude is much better. The other side is actually even higher, but this um, 
you know, it's at least twice as big. Now what we can do is just go back to our scanner, plug in the sensor, turn the key on, spin the wheel by hand and see if we can register the very low speeds and that will confirm the repair. Okay, we have the ABS data up, front left, front right, spin the wheel slowly by hand. You see 2.3, that's the lowest speed that it registers, which is equivalent to the rears. So very happy about that. And they, they come up, they come online exactly at the same time. This car is fixed. Might as well just uh, go back in. Let's see. Just save that. We'll go back in and reset the engine codes. Clear codes. Okay. Success. Check the codes. There should be no codes stored. No codes present and no pending codes. Excellent. All right. So all I have to do now is torque down the lug nuts and take this vehicle for a test drive. All right, final test drive. Look at our wheel speeds, and the vehicle speed is right down here. There it is, 2.3, 3.1. Everything is very even and smooth. I like it. So it comes down very nicely, no dropouts. We're still in the parking brake. <laughs> it's fixed! Yeah! <laughs> so we'll save this guy. And that should be it. Sweet. Just do a full code scan just to make sure. <clears throat> I think if we deleted the codes out of the engine, it should have uh, done the same for the transmission and the cruise control. Yep, transmission code zero, ABS code zero, airbag code zero, cruise control, come on, code zero. <laughs> Boom. And we are done. That's what we like to see. That's a good Toyota. No codes at all. Perfect. Give the car back to the customer. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, that's it. See you next one. Bye-bye.